Hello again, fellow Texans. I'm Rick Green, your constitutionally minded conservative candidate for the Texas Supreme Court. I just want to talk to you straight from the heart today and, and talk about some of these things that are being said about us, a lot of these accusations floating around out there in email and in the newspapers. I want to address those head on, but first I want to talk a little bit about the differences between my opponent and myself and, and kind of the differences in this race. You know, we've run a very unconventional campaign. We've just come through videos like this online to talk directly with you or chat back and forth on Facebook. Had the chance to visit with many of you face to face and one on one as we traveled across the state. And we just went out there and said, here's what we believe, here's what we're about, this is the philosophy we'd like to take to the Texas Supreme Court. You rewarded us for that candor by putting us in first place on election night out of six candidates. Now, to say that that shocked the establishment is probably the understatement of the year. They were shocked. And in fact, now the left-wing media and the, the lobbyists in Austin and my opponent, they're all trying really hard to make sure that a strict constructionist, constitutional guy like myself doesn't make it to the Texas Supreme Court. We must be over the target because we're taking a lot of flack. I'll tell you what makes us different and why a lot of folks really are, are doing that right now. Uh, for instance, back when I was a legislator, when I was in the, in the state legislature as a representative, the lobbyists in Austin, they knew that I was not someone they could lobby one way or the other and try to change my opinion. It didn't matter how much they lobbied or how much money they promised to my campaign or to my opponents. I was going to do what I thought was right regardless of the cost. Now, lobbyists don't like that. They want to be able to move you one way or the other. It's kind of the same way in judicial campaigns. I am not owned by any particular part of the bar. I have taken no money from the law firms that practice before the Texas Supreme Court. And all these things really do make me different from my opponent. Now, the second major difference between us is just our basic philosophy. I'm the only true conservative left in this race. My voting record as a legislator proves that. But also in the questionnaires that we're given as judicial candidates, the conservative candidates for the judiciary, including sitting judges, we have no problem answering these questions. And when we get asked things like about Roe v. Wade and, and our opinion on that decision, I had no problem saying I was against that decision. Uh, when we get asked about special rights for homosexuals or gay marriage, had no problem saying I was against those things. Or the case where the court said that our kids could not even pray at a football game, of course I said I was against that decision. Now my opponent, when asked all these same questions, her answer has been no response unwilling to let you know where she stands on the major issues of our day. Now, the United States Supreme Court said in a case called uh, Republican Party of Minnesota v. White, they said that we as judicial candidates not only have a right to answer these questions, but you, the voter, have a right to know the answers. You have a right to know what our basic philosophy is, simply so we can make wise decisions about who, who we choose to represent us on the bench. And same way in those questionnaires, we were asked about groups that had supported us or who we supported. I listed organizations like Wall Builders and Alliance Defense Fund and American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow's organization, Liberty Council, other groups that are conservative legal organizations. My opponent listed the Children's Defense Fund, Hillary Clinton's favorite left-wing organization. Friends, there's a big difference between these two candidates. And that's why there's such an attempt right now uh, to smear our name and to, and, and to do all these distortions in the newspapers and in, in an email. Now, it's not a new game plan. This is the same way that they've gone after nationally people like Sarah Palin and Newt Gingrich, effective conservatives. Well, they do the same thing on the local level in races like this. All the things they're dredging up right now, more than a decade or almost a decade old, these are all these old claims of, of ethics complaints and investigations. They're all found to be without merit. They're all all been dismissed, but they get their headlines and then they're able to email that around and put that in their mailers that they send out. It's all false, it's deceptive, it's distorted, and you need to know that. Now there is one thing I need to address, one item that is true. There was a situation several years ago for which I have publicly apologized, have been very open about it, written about it in our book, it's all over our website as well, and it's this. Several years ago, uh, there was another state representative that for years continued to, to drag my family's name through the mud. Uh, when he refused to stop doing that, we had a physical altercation, and once all the facts were known and it was put out publicly, the whole thing was dismissed. There was absolutely no adjudication of guilt, certainly no conviction of assault or any of these other things that my opponent and others are saying in these mailers and in, in the emails. You need to know the truth about that and be able to separate fact from fiction. Now, here's something I will not apologize for. I am a man of principle and conviction. I believe strongly in the principles that made our country great. I'm willing to fight for my family and your family and for the things that we believe in. I'm willing to fight for those principles and preserve freedom for the next generation. 
If you're looking for pale pastels, what President Reagan said in 1964, he said, we don't need pale pastels. We need bold colors. We need to be very clear about what we believe in, what we stand for, what our party stands for, and those are the things we need to go out and be willing to defend. If you're looking for that, if, you're, if you don't want another weak need politician, but you want someone that will stand firm, that has backbone, passion, and conviction, then my name is Rick Green. I would greatly appreciate your support for Texas Supreme Court. Give me the opportunity to serve you on the court and defend those principles that made our nation great. Again, Rick Green for Texas Supreme Court. Thank you very much.